Hi, today we're going to talk about phototransduction, the process of taking information about light and converting that into an electrical signal in a cell. And of course the cell we're talking about, the cells we're talking about are the rods or cones of the retina. Now the rods and cones operate essentially the same. They're going to detect light with a series of proteins that are collectively called opsins. And there are several different varieties of opsin, rhodopsin, which is found within the rods, and various photoopsins, which are found in the cones. But they essentially all act the same way. And so what we're going to do is we're going to talk through this process of how we detect light in the cell. Now as we move forward, one thing we want to remember is that the cell is more active in the dark, that it is, deep, it is depolarized and is releasing neurotransmitter. That seems a little counterintuitive, but that is the case. And then when the cell encounters light, it becomes more negative, is less active, and is releasing less neurotransmitter. So let's talk about how this happens. So let's talk about the players first. We have opsin, which is a 7-transmembrane G-coupled receptor. And what that means is that the protein crosses the membrane seven times, and it is interacting with a G protein. In this case, the G protein is called transducin. At the core of opsin is a small molecule derived from vitamin A called 11 cis retinal. And it's actually this molecule that will first detect light. We also have phosphodiesterase, which we'll talk about in a second. And then in the dark, the cell has a high concentration of a substance called CGNP or cyclic guanyl monophosphate. This is produced from guanine, and uh, it is uh, you know, a common intracellular signaling molecule. In this particular case, what it is signaling is the fact that it can bind to various channels. In this case, it's binding to this channel, which is a CGMP-gated channel. Right? And it is binding from the inside, so it's a little bit different from some of the channels we've talked about and it is keeping this channel open. So in the dark, this channel is open, and it is letting sodium into the cell. And this is called the dark current. It's a flow of an ion into the cell that's only around in the dark. In this particular case, the ion that we were highlighting is sodium. There's also some calcium coming in that we're really not, that's really beyond this discussion. CGMP can be converted into GMP, which is in red, right? which we don't see any of that right now, but we'll see that in the next slide. So CGMP is green, means go, means the dark current is on, right? The cell is going to be more positive. Um, GMP is stop, essentially because we're going to be closing this channel in a second. The other player that we want to mention are the leak channels. Remember, these are always active in cells. And in this particular case, we're highlighting a potassium leak channel, which is letting potassium out of the cell. Of course, that's making the cell more negative. But you'll notice we're bringing in a lot more sodium than we are having potassium leave. And so the cell is more positive because we have a balanced positive net flow of ions into the cell. So let's see what happens when light hits our cell. So we're going to have light hit the opsin. And the first thing you're going to notice is that the 11 cis retinal is now 11 trans retinal. So this particular pro, this particular, uh, a particular wavelength of light is going to hit this molecule, converting it from cis to trans. And when that happens, the opsin will change shape subtly. Right? It's a very small change in shape. That is going to cause our G protein to disengage from opsin and then start interacting with PDE, or again, phosphodiesterase. The job of phosphodiesterase in this particular situation is to start breaking down CGMP. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start breaking down CGMP. It's not just going to disappear, it is going to be converted into GMP. And so as CGMP levels fall, that means that there's going to be less that is bound to the CGMP gated channel. Without CGMP, this channel will close. 
And so, of course, now the sodium can no longer enter the cell. So we've abolished the dark current. And in fact, the cell is going to start becoming more negative. Why? Because we still have potassium leaving the cell through the leak channels. And so as potassium leaves, the cell becomes more negative. And of course, as the cell becomes more negative, it is less active and is releasing less neurotransmitter. Now, all this stuff we're talking about is temporary. So if we were to go back into the dark, essentially what would happen is the G protein would slip back over to start interacting with opsin. We've not highlighted it on this image, but there are mechanisms to make CGMP. So CGMP levels would build up. Again, right? And of course, some of that CGMP would start interacting with our CGMP gated channel and sodium would start to flow into the cell again. Now, another thing we have to do in order for opsin to be reactivated again, we have to somehow get rid of this 11 trans retinal and bring back our cis retinal. So the 11 trans retinal actually migrates away from the opsin, goes back to the pigment layer of the eye where it is reconfigured to become 11 cis retinal, and we're back to where we started. Right. So this process is constantly going on with the cells encountering light, CGMP levels falling, the cell becoming depolarized, and then we're going back to the dark. So this process stops, CGMP levels rise, and the dark current again turns on. So that's phototransduction in a nutshell. Thank you.